welcome back to my channel. This is Darian Terrell. So today I'm gonna talk about why in the world did I put vertical doors on a 2002 Hyundai Accent. I'm gonna explain why. So about three years ago, my best friend, my brother, he passed away. Um, his family passed on a vehicle to me that was supposed to be for Pedro and um, it didn't run. It, didn't even go in reverse, the transmission was shot, um, and I took it in as a project. Uh, I wanted to have a rebuild for my brother, so I had an idea of what I wanted to do, you know, wide body kit, uh, race seats, bucket seats, um, you know, a, a roll cage harness, new engine squad, basically an entire rebuild, and I wanted to keep it within like a $15,000 budget. So thus far, I've put about 5,000 in it, um, and I have, quite a bit of ways to go so right now it's still under construction and to make things worse somebody hit my passenger door so now my passenger door does not open my door handle is smashed in my door handle uh, it's smashed into the point where it doesn't even lock and I can't open that door at all but I'm gonna show you guys the driver side vertical door of how the door operates what the car looks like right now um, and what how much more work I have to do on this car before it's completed. This is my baby, which the hood, I'm gonna warn you guys right now. Carbon wrap in the sun, don't go together. So if you get carbon, I would go with a different color than black because I've taken excellent, phenomenal care of this wrap. It has been on here for a couple years, but that is what the wrap looks like right now. I've cleaned it multiple times, and it stays like that. So, all right, so quick side view. So I've got the drifts rims on here, they're gold. Um, a very odd sized tire, because if I went any bigger and went thinner, um, it's easy to crack a rim, and it's quite dangerous uh, to drive with super, super, super thin tires. Um, but if I go too thick, it rubs. Uh, I've tried putting, um, uh, what are those things called? Spacers, there you go. I've tried putting spacers on there. I've put double spacers on there. Um, it's still rubbed. So I went with a size tire that is thin enough to make the rim seem bigger than what it is but small enough that it fits and um, the, the the width of the tire isn't that thick either so it fits perfectly perfect size tire. Um, so as you can see with the bumper the little bit of damage from the road that I have thus far um, which I know how to do the fiberglass stuff to fix that I'm not too worried about it um, same thing with a couple of little chips on the side it's just little fiberglass work. It's just tedious. The wrap's coming off. This wrap's coming off. Matte black, carbon black, does not last that long, just so you guys know. Um, a little bit more carbon work I have to do there. Um, the back's not too bad. It's not too bad. Uh, this is stock, by the way. This is not primed, painted, none of that. This is how it comes when you order it. Um, anything aftermarket, usually, this is how it comes in. Um, this right here, I'm not sure how I'm going to fix it. Um, I'm not quite sure yet. But I'm going to get that fixed as well. Um, so, the good thing is, though, is... It's not going anywhere. This bumper's on here pretty good. So, um, the fender flares. So, the fender flares are pretty cool. It, it gives your car, you can see the dent in my door, you see that? Um, the fender flares gives the car some um, wide body type look. Uh, this is a very small boxy car, it's a hatchback. Um, so it gives it that little pop up, you know. I took off the panels. Um, I have to take off this panel. Well, actually, I gotta have this entire door taken off, have this popped out, fixed the door, um, lock fixed. Uh, yeah, pretty much. 
that sucks. That was unexpected. I got hit while my car was parked. Um, and I had this put on here back before I got my domain of DarianSorrell.com. So that's coming off. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, that's that's what she looks like. Got the bucket seats in there. Uh, the bench that's in the back is actually from a Jeep. And I had the, the latch that hooks into the Jeep where you can t take the seat off. I had it cut and flipped and welded and then put into the seat. That way they can still have access to the fuel pump. So, pretty cool. So, under the hood. Everybody wants to know what's under it. Is it a sleeper? Um, it's actually stock right now. Sorry to disappoint you guys, but the engine is stock right now. Um, there is a new fuel pump in it. There is a uh, new transmission in it, as well as the cylinder one and cylinder two wires had to be rebuilt because they were misfiring back into the engine. Uh, let's see, what else have I done? Oh, the rails. I put the rails on here because, uh, like, they're going to get wrapped and all that. Or I might put a, um, a, a side skirt to match. But that's just to protect um, because when I go at angles, because the car already sits low. I don't have lowered suspension. Um, I don't have su air suspension. I don't have any of that. This is stock. This is a stock car that I rebuilt. Um, the bumper... The bumpers, you can see the front is pretty low, the back's still pretty low. So speed bumps is fine, but any like edges, curves, anything like that, I have to go at an angle. Um, so because of going at an angle, I didn't want to have side skirts on and go at an angle and crack those. So, and I'm not going to pay thousands, maybe I think like I can get it for probably $1,000, the suspension lift, the, the type that I want. I can have it installed, but I'm not going to put anything else into this car until I get the door fixed, I get the engine in there, and make sure that it's tweaked and modified. Um, if I go with a different engine, but the same the same maker, uh, if I go with like a Tiburon or something like that, I'm going to have to get it dyno tuned. I'm going to have it done right, and then do the rest of the body work, um, and then take off the wrap probably gonna wrap it like a camo blue or something like that something just absurd ridiculous and then later if i want to do the lift i can but it's really kind of pointless i'm i'm cool with it where it's at i don't want it any lower than this um i don't think i'm gonna be doing all that on this and i'm gonna get uh different brakes because i have standard ones on here right now and i'm kind of a heavy foot kind of guy and i drive with two feet so, I say I get my brakes changed every like six months. It's not too bad. I also got this put on the back of here. Um, the Etsy will probably stay on there. I might get all of this taken off and redone because I'm probably going to put my emblem, my trademark emblem. Um, and then my social media. So I'm probably going to take this all off. That's if I can get it off. It's on here pretty good. Um, it's lasted quite a while. Uh, it's barely starting to to chip. But it's pretty decent. So. Oh and, and when I got the. When I switched out the fuel pump. Some gunk got stuck back into the tank. So I have to drop the gas tank because when I pump it gets clogged so I have to pump slow so my car is like I'm like the only one that knows how to deal with my car and drive my car because so my car is special but it has a lot of sentimental value to me so though the between putting the engine in um, I'm getting different race seats I'm going with the carbon instead of suede because the suede has faded so it's just a learning progress you know I spent about eight hundred dollars on the front seats the back seats and modifying and being installed all of that uh you know i'm gonna go with the carbon seats um i'm gonna keep the bench back there but the roll cage is definitely gonna cover it so it's gonna be a two-seater vehicle i'm putting a quick release in the front i'm getting one of the handles that's like you know 
a U shape, just two handles basically. It's going to be pretty cool, pretty similar to the Lambo um, steering wheels. Uh, the inside's going to be probably wrapped. I'm not going to go too crazy on the interior. I want to focus more on under the hood. Um, the exterior, I want it to be pretty decent. The car's loud, you know what I'm saying? Because once you take out stock parts, you can start to hear more. When you're sitting low with race seats, you start to feel more and hear more. So there's that. But uh, let's see what else. I definitely want to put... I definitely want to put a turbo in here, possibly a twin turbo. We're going to see what I can do because I don't necessarily want to get another transmission. I, I have a transmission in there right now that's new, but but I, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind just, you know, getting a fully assembled engine and uh, if it's pretty spanking new, cool. If not, I can just buy one for 800 that has 50 60 000 miles have it taken apart and rebuilt and then put back in whatever is the best and most cost effective is the plan um, i'd rather go with doing it right and it costing more than to go cheaper and i have to fix stuff later on this engine has a hundred and i gotta look right now 70 something anyways um this car treats me well. It runs great. I literally like go to Tucson. I go to Scottsdale. I go to Mesa. I go to Tempe. Um, I smash like, and I can drive all day, every day, every single day. My car is runs great. Literally, I've I keep up with the oil. I keep up with the basic maintenance of my car. I take care of every single thing underneath this engine. So this car's in extremely good condition. Um, I'm actually due for an oil and some power steering, but. Um, probably switch out my brakes here pretty soon but they're not even like i still have pretty good padding on there they're not squeaky nothing like nothing like that um yeah that's pretty much it i mean you can see the the lights i've cleaned them multiple times they still fog especially that one um this car's old those are stock so that is going to be taken out so sorry about these kids screaming but um yeah, I'm going to have those taken out, of course. I'm going to put LEDs in them. I know people hate them, but I love them. So, yeah, same thing with the back. I'm going to put LEDs. Uh, I'm going to get, like, a light, lightly gray-tinted wrap on them, possibly. Uh, I think that's pretty much about it. It's mostly, uh, mostly want to get under that hood and play with everything that's in there. So, also, when you modify a car, I've had multiple people try to steal my car. I've had multiple people try to break into my car, and none of them have succeeded, thanks to this wonderful Viper. So, yeah, that definitely sucks. That's so disappointing. So, people can't get in my car, and when they do, they have to hop in the back. Um, I did get seats that folded, uh, but I don't like them. I don't like them. They faded really quick. Um... They were like, I want to say I spent like 400, 500 bucks on those seats. Um, I'd rather spend four, five hundred dollars on each seat, and just go all carbon. Quality is just so much better. Um, for me, this car is definitely worth it. It's sentimental value. I rebuilt this car for my brother, uh, and he's an organ donor, so I'm definitely going to be getting some green and blue up in there. Blue is my favorite color. It's his favorite color as well. Um, the green is the organ donor uh, color, so, you know, I'm going to get one seat is going to be blue, and then the other one is going to be green. So, that I'm going to do it like that because I I feel his energy. Um, I'm very emotionally attached to this car, and I'm going to get the blue seat for me and the green for him. Like, you know, like he's sitting there with me. So, that's how I'm going to do that. But, yeah, I've had people try to mess with my car. They couldn't. Um, Vipers, it's definitely worth it. With two uh, two power locks and the modules and them tweaking all of the wiring. It is a lot of wiring. A lot. Ridiculous. Um, you have to get these installed at a dealership because of how intricate it is. And it usually runs about, with two module power locks and the Viper system, about $1,500. So, it's a lot of stuff to cover um, in one video, but... Uh, I wanted to compress this in one video because all of the projects I'm going to be doing on this car, there's going to be a lot of videos. So, um, 
that's pretty much everything I want to do to the car, where I stand with where it's at right now. Um, I'm also going to do on the interior, um, everything stock. Like, I'm going to crack it open for you so you guys can see. So, yeah, everything's stock. Um, it's a little dirty, but for a 2002 car that's rebuilt, it's not that bad. It runs really great. Um, this is the setup for the the vertical. Um, it's a vertical hinge and a hydraulic. So, um, I have to be very careful because if I move too crazy, I'm going to make my alarm go off. Um, so, yeah, that's my brother right here. Um, so I have 177,455. That's pretty much what's in there. Um, this is the stock setup over here. Um, this is how old it is. I got a cassette player in here. <laughs> but I'm getting all this torn out. You already know. Um, Bluetooth, touchscreen, all of that stuff. Um, my AC doesn't work, but I've never used it anyways, but my heat does work. It's an electrical piece that needs to be, it's like a $300 fix. Um, so yeah, see my door doesn't, uh, it doesn't lock because of that. So that's pretty much it, you know. Um, Hyundai is definitely just a really good car. My car is treating me fairly well. Um... This is the setup for my Viper. I don't want to touch it because it's going to set it off. Um, yeah. And I got to get this fixed because the frame of my door is, uh, the, the screw is not fitting and it broke. I broke my door. I got mad and I just, yeah, so I did that. Oops. But, um, that was pretty much it, you know. The Viper, it's, uh... I have five alarms on here and I can modify and customize them as well um, so the first one is a standard lock second one um, locks it's standard like a normal car lock when you hit the car hard enough it'll go off right and then it's also got the um, the tilt sensor so if somebody tries to steal my rims and then the third one um, it just starts to add more layers of protection the fifth one lastly is the the one i use all of the time um it is quite annoying having to press this five times but it's worth it um and i did not pay fifteen hundred dollars for the entire setup because i've spent five thousand dollars on this car i was super blessed and i only paid for the parts not the labor sucks for them because it took them three days to install it because it was a pain in the ass but um yeah no the f uh, the five alarm thing uh, that locks the car. I have a microwave sensor for those of you that don't know what that is. It's a motion detector sense on the inside. So I have sensors all over my car. Um, I have sensors at the door. I have um, sensors everywhere in my car, just in random places. Um, and then that just lets you know that the alarm is there to warn people. Uh, but it, see, it's flashing once, but. Um, if I do it five times, it'll flash five times. So, and this goes up to a mile, I believe. So, oh, and I have remote start on here. Just hit this, hit this, remote start. Um, pretty cool. And there's also a setting for people who are in colder states. You can modify this to where your car auto starts on its own to keep the engine warm. So that way when you get in your car, you can just go. You don't have to wait for it to you know, basically warm up. You don't want to crack your uh, stuff, you know. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool setup. Um, it's really, it's not that expensive. Um, even if you guys pay, you know, stock for it or whatever. Uh, the normal standard price, I mean. Um, so, I have quite a bit of ways, but this car's my daily driver. It's my money maker, you know what I mean? Um, I travel all over the place between modeling, brand ambassador, my art business, business errands. I go to Tucson to see my mom, um, visit family, friends. I go everywhere in this car. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, and I will make a video of it as well, 
I'm gonna be getting another car. But not to replace this one, because I did think about selling it for a while just to as a better financial decision, but I'm too attached to it. And for me, it's worth putting another 10 more grand in here and having an entirely rebuilt car. I spent 15 grand on it total and it's gonna last me forever because it's a Hyundai and I've already have a lot of miles on here. I have a new timing belt in there. I'm not due for a timing belt for a while. Like I take really good care of my cars. So um, this is not my first car either. So uh, it is my first rebuild though. So it's definitely a difficult project. But the plan is to um, get another car for uh, as a company car. So I'm probably going to get like a Toyota or something like that. Something that's fuel efficient, full size sedan, um, probably black or white. I need Bluetooth and just good miles. Something that's going to be good for work. But I still have space and stuff if I need to drop off canvases and stuff like that. When I go to photo shoots and when I travel, I always have uh, snacks in my car. Um, a trash bag and like I'll put like a water thing in my uh what are those things called god brain fart i'm so out of it today i'm sorry guys um you know like a what have the word crisper in my mind no it's a refrigerator it's not a crisper it's uh like those igloo things you know where you can put your water and everything in it a cooler oh my god why did i forget that word that was driving me nuts a cooler i always have one of those in my car as well um, so when I'm on the road I have food snacks whatever I can save money doing that and a suitcase because I have a bunch of stuff that I take with me when I travel so that's pretty much the whole deal with my vehicle um, so you guys have an idea of why in the world that Darian put vertical doors on a Hyundai um, that is why you guys because I love my car and I can do what I want <laughs> I just, I just, I wanted to see if it was possible. I've had a lot of people that compliment it, and then I've had a lot of people bash it as well. I really don't care what people think about what I do with my money and with my car. It has sentimental value for me. I wouldn't take it back. I'd do it all over again. The only thing I would do is when I had the opportunity to buy a car cash, I would have bought that car first. That way I could have spent more time rebuilding this. You can't rebuild a car that's your daily driver when you every time you drop it off at the shop it's there for a couple of days like how are you supposed to work and make money to keep doing what you're doing you know that's the only mistake that i made in rebuilding this car was that i should have should have could have would have when i had the money um so now it's uh i'm probably gonna be getting a new car pretty soon probably like let's say like in may that's the plan is may and i'll show you guys what i'm gonna be getting tell me what y'all think and this baby is just going to be, you know, keep rebuilding it. She's gorgeous. I've put so much love into this car. All right. So before I'm out of here, I will uh, start her up for you guys. still sounds pretty good I got some like squeaking going on not like hard squeaking but I can definitely hear it starting to um, I need to get the uh, power steering I usually get power steering it, it, it lasts a while but you know it's been a year so it's about that time and I'm getting too thick for my seats so when I got these seats they fit me exactly like they fit me perfectly but I'm starting to get too wide. Um, and like, I don't fit all the way in. It's because they're bucket seats. You're supposed to fit in it. So it grips you nicely. Yeah, so when I get new seats, I'm gonna go a little bit wider, which probably beneficial for the passenger too, because yeah, these seats are, um, quite tiny because <laughs> I was quite tiny thank you guys for watching my channel daring to rail I'm out of here stay tuned don't forget to like subscribe share and turn on your notifications so that you guys can see the rest of the videos about my car and I'll keep you guys in tune when I get a new car